introduce myself. Um, I'm Grant. I'm a, a developer platform engineer working at Google. I work on G Suite. So that's everything from uh, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides. Uh, they have APIs, Google Drive, Gmail, et cetera. Um, and in particular, I work a lot on App Script. Um, so I maintain the GitHub samples for uh, Google App Script on uh, the GitHub org G Suite devs, as well as uh, the command line tool Clasp that came out uh, earlier this year. So I want to show um, how you can use some of the more advanced features of Clasp, uh, including TypeScript uh, with your type with your uh, App Script projects. So here I just have a simple slide deck. Um, and you can just go to tools and script editor, and you can see I have a simple um, app script project. Um, it's just basic uh, app script and some HTML. So this this one, uh, this demo, you first have to say OK. Um, you can manage your slides. It basically allows you to create a sidebar um, in which you can translate text from one language to another. So let's say I want this in French. It'll translate the content into French or translate it into Chinese. <laughs> and so you can see Google's obviously translates mm -hmm. to Google, but um, the rest translates to Chinese. And so uh, that's powered by this code. Um, let's say uh, so. Let's say you're in this project. I actually pulled it, um, so you can. Can you bump up the font size? Yeah. So yes. here I clasped cloned the project. Um, which you can just go to file project properties, see the script ID. Um, I cloned it there. And then you can see it creates a class.json as well as uh, code.js and sidebar.js and the app script manifest. Um, to install types, uh, as we saw before, you can just npm install uh, types slash Google Apps Script. Um, and then you'll get this node modules folder. And so you can just go open code. This is Visual Studio Code. And you'll see um, your code here. And uh, you can also see like some um, variables are not used. That's a feature of Visual Studio Code. And syntax highlighting. So let's say I want to complete this. Um, since I've installed the types, I get all this auto completion. Um, sort of just like the uh, editor. Add item. And I'll add UI. So I just copied the back end. But you can see all the, um, you don't have to completely fill out the, the methods. They'll all autocomplete for these types. Um, so let's say you have a GS file, but um, so you can see like, this is uh, declared but never used. So let's say you have a um, GS file, but you want to use uh, Lambda functions or uh, async wait or, or some um, fancy ES6, ES7, and ES8, or just TypeScript. Also, the only thing you need to do is change your uh, file extension from code.gs or js to uh, ts. And you'll see the file doesn't change. But um, you'll be able to say, hey, this is a constant. And if I try to say uh, set it to something else, 
uh, type Visual Studio Code, as well as other, other editors will say, you cannot do this, it's a read only property because it's constant. Um, let's see, you can convert this to an arrow function as well as all of your functions into error functions, if you like that um, syntax. Um, and let's see. Also, I have uh, in, so this is the project uh, Google Clasp. I have a guide on TypeScript on all the different features in, uh, which you can use with your uh, AppScript project. So. Um, so TypeScript, first of all, it's a, a superset of JavaScript, um, which can compile down to plain AppScript. So it's a bit of an advanced um, layer on top of AppScript, but um, on top of JavaScript, but it allows you to do some cool things like uh, um, you can have arrow functions, optional threshold typing, classes, type inference. So um, It'll, the identifier will be identified as a certain type. You can have interfaces, so you can say this method must return some object of this certain shape, and a bunch more. Um, this was, TypeScript support was released, I think, two months ago or something. Um, and allows for existing projects, as well as new projects, to use TypeScript. So as I just showed, um, you can simply just rename your file from, um, from GS to TS. And in fact, when you class push, uh, you'll see all the files. It's pushing code.ts, which um, is right here. And when you actually open that file, um, you'll see that you'll have these two lines um, that uh, support uh, node modules so that you don't, if there's any um, module that is using exports or module, those keywords, uh, it won't break the script compiler. Um, but the code will look relatively similar. We'll see there's vars instead of the cons, which I think we said there. Um, and uh, the code will be pretty much the same. So I, I guess we've, it's been announced that um, Google Apps Script is going to move to, um, I think it's the V8 engine, which will be yep. yes. Uh, six or eight. Yeah, so, uh, so I guess it really yeah. makes sense if you know, uh, if you start using TypeScript now, you're you're essentially you're going to get the benefits of when the V8 engine comes in. I, I'm guessing that when you compile the scripts, it'll, it'll use, um, uh, you know, the the latest coding conventions that work within the script editor. Yeah, so um, once ES6 and V8 is uh, ready, um, it's already been announced that Google Cloud Next, um, then instead of uh, transpiling this from TypeScript to uh, ES3, we can uh, transpile it to ES6 or ES7, um, the latest version of V8. So, uh, so a great way of future proofing. I imagine you know Google will obviously continue to support older scripts, but um, to get the benefits of some of the new ways that you can do stuff and make your code readable. Um, yeah. So it's sort of similar to the way that the web has um, progressed beyond. Uh, what browsers can support currently um, pretty common in the web world where you can uh, code at a feature version of the language spec 
uh, but you can make sure that you're supporting browsers such as like IE8, et cetera. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, TypeScript will be able to support local app script development outside of script.google.com and perhaps even um, help create in like a library system uh, mm -hmm. that will allow for better sharing of code um, with auto completion. Um, uh, so we've got a question from Rudy about um, when the translation happens, um, will the GS extension go away to be JS or um, will it stay the same? Um, yeah, so for the translation, um, to use TypeScript, uh, Clasps only reads the uh, TS files and then transpiles those. Um, but you'll see on the in the script editor, um, all the files are still GS files. And yeah. so the actual extension um, is still GS at this point. I'm not sure about uh, when V8 is coming. I don't know what the convention will be there. Sure. I have a question. Um, when it comes to yeah. version control, like GitHub, central repository for code, um, do you have a recommendation or a thought of, of which version to store in the repository? Because I guess I'm kind of thinking of the, the pushing back to the Google Drive is more of a publishing process rather than central repository. Do you have a comment on that? Um, so as as to which back, like where to push your AppScript file? Yeah, so in other words, if I have the TypeScript version, for lack of a better way of saying it, yeah, should that version be pushed to the central repository? Yeah, so I, ideally the, um, the TypeScript version is the source of truth for your project. And then, um, like for example, if you try to, uh, if you, like, for example, we could just copy this example and let's say just put it up above. Um, some of these might not work. Actually, I think that should be fine. Uh, if we do that, name is, I'll just skip this example. But let's say we try to push that that code, um, which has some fancy uh, classes, um, types, and spread operators, etc. When we open it, we'll see that the code is is transpiled. It doesn't really look very pretty, um, mm -hmm. and so, like for example, this was an enum. Um, this color, it was, so for example, it'll allow for auto completion like this, uh, blue, red, or green. Um, and this EDOM construct was transpiled into this sort of uglier mess, which we, we don't, you probably don't want to hand, ma uh, maintain this in your repository. Yeah, I agree. So you okay. wouldn't push this code. You, you want to push this code. OK, that makes sense. Thank you. That's a good question. And I guess um, if you're using class, you're already in, you know, becoming familiar with a, a command line. So easy enough to um, start doing git commands as well. Yeah. Um, so it does the like local editors I think there's a Git plugin where you don't need yeah. to know the Git commands. You can just sync uh, to GitHub, bucket or, or whichever 
um, source control you want. But uh, yeah, for example, if you're using Clasp, Clasp is only a command line tool. It's not an extension mm -hmm. right now. Um, and so it does require a little bit of, it's more advanced, requires a little bit of knowledge. So I, I suppose that's one of the things um, just that would be is useful to highlight as well that um, VS Code comes with a lot of extensions. Um, there's all marketplace of bits and pieces yeah. that you can add um, so you can get additional functionality uh, into VS Code so you, you can drop in uh, GitHub stuff. Yes, that's a good point. Um, so one of the be benefits of uh using your own editor is that you are able to leverage the extensions that the community have built. For example, I use ESLint, which is a, a common JavaScript uh, linter, which detects uh, stylistic errors. Um, there's also a beautifier, uh, which will, like format your code. Um, and like things like Markdown Lint, um, IntelliSense for NPM. It's um, a slightly unrelated question, but um, uh, one of the comments we got in for the show was um, um, tips on inline documentation. Uh, does mm -hmm. VS Code have a, a JS doc package that you can use? Um, a JS doc? Yeah, so yeah. for example, like uh, the JS doc um, properties of the spec are like listed here. All right, so um, they're already. So, yeah, for example, like the app ram is common. Yeah. Um, which you provide the type, and then it'll probably fail because there's no, no two parameters, but. Um, I think if you try to see a usage of this, it might see it'll, it'll show the open the sidebar mm -hmm. in the document job doc param. So that's very useful. Um, I wanted to show one more thing that I actually was working on last night. Um, so I don't know if it'll work, but let's try it. So, um, so Stackdriver is uh, one of the uh, primary ways to get debug logs into yep. um, with your source control. And logging is very important for all languages. Um, one of the things I've been working on is trying to make it easier to a log within um, class and basically have a uh, a log system where you can just see the logs being streamed. Um, so let me see. Let me sure make sure it's set up correctly. So the way to set up class logs, I'll do it. Um, manually, first you need in your class.json, um, you need to have your project ID. And the way to get your project ID is to, uh, currently you have to use the script editor and go to resources cloud platform project. Here you'll see the project ID prefixed with project dash ID. And you copy it here. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, you can actually, let's just watch. So you can uh, stream your logs into your terminal. Um, let's see if this works. So it'll periodically look. Um, so let's just do a hello world.
so running a function which will uh, use console.log, which goes to the stack driver logs. Um, it should hopefully, probably the next one, um, takes about 10 seconds in my experience. But uh, you can see uh, log hello was run and produced the output hello. <laughs> and so That's you can, this uh, will like query the stack driver logs every 10 seconds or every six seconds or something. Um, and you could have some like complicated You can also uh, stream as JSON. So if you had some JSON, it'll, I mean, it'll show the full mm -hmm. um, output as JSON in case you wanted that. So here, I think we can just like copy and paste this if we really wanted to hardcore to that. Um, so that's a feature I, uh, built last night, actually. Uh, so is it, and so has it been pushed? it's live. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pushed. Um, should be live. Uh, if not, I'll check it right after this, but, um, nice hopefully it'll being, make. Uh, nice to have a yeah. totally unscripted exclusive there. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, so, it's like a good banner at the bottom. Breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that's the first ever demo of uh, stack driver <laughs> logging, uh, watching uh, live to you on totally unscripted. <laughs> and it worked. Yay. And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so uh... I'm, I'm imagining like this would be super useful. I mean, you can even have a terminal within your VS code, as we saw before. I don't know exactly how to set it up, but um, maybe you can have your logs right in yeah. your editor. Certainly for yeah. those uh, doing local script development, I, their, their world is um, increasing at a, a rapid, pace, rapid pace. Is there anything else on the, the roadmap? Clasp that you can talk about? Um, yeah, so I'm trying to. So the auto completion that we saw before, um, so it works pretty nicely for things like Slides app and Spreadsheet app. Um, but if you're trying to use an advanced service like Slides dot presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't work that well, as you can see. And so one thing I'm working on is I'm creating these definitions so that you can use uh, the advanced services. Uh, so let's see. So it probably not um, use it directly, but Oh, I'm not sure exactly how it works. It's too, too new. Um, yeah, well, so anyway, I, I'm basically trying to enable for auto completion for advanced services, which allow you to um, use any Google REST API within AppScript. So let's say there's not this uh, Slides app or Spreadsheet app. If you're using, um, some Google service, like the Photos API or something that mm -hmm. doesn't have one of these yet. Um, well, you, uh, soon, hopefully, you can have auto completion uh, right in your editor. Would that include Firebase? Um, so, I'm not sure. It, it might. Uh, if it's a standard Google API, well, 
Is it? So I, I take it you're it has just com compiling the definition of the um, Google API discovery service. Uh, yeah, it's so yeah, it uses the Google API discovery service. Um, but it also, since there's also more APIs than just these ones that Google offers, um, I'm working on these one, these initial ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Well, anyway, if you're interested um, in contributing to the types to help support autocompletion locally, uh, I'll, I'll post the issue um, that has the update date information on the uh, YouTube description. And I guess um, if people are developing their own um, libraries for App Script, as long as they um, uh, create the, the annotation file for it, um, they, you know they can get all complete for their their own libraries as well. Yeah. Um... So I mean, I'm really excited for the day where there's uh, we open up open up script up to like their uh, better libraries that provide uh, auto completion and are easily shareable. Because I think once you have like great auto completion um, and you have like maybe you just npm install uh, a different library or service you want to use. Um, you don't have to rewrite all, all your code. You can leverage mm -hmm. um, the function or, or the uh, the demo that someone else has written. So please, uh, if you have feature requests for Clasp, if it's if you like Clasp or you haven't used Clasp um, for App Script because of one specific thing, please file an issue or upload an issue, and I'll definitely. Uh, Try to implement it soon. There's um to find out more about class. The, I know the the GitHub repo's got lots of documentation as well. So, like you've showed some of it as part of the show in terms of, and I real dipped into it as well in terms of setting up class and um, using TypeScript. Yeah, so uh, if you're interested in using class, I definitely check out the GitHub repo, right? Uh, at Google slash Clasp. Um, and for more advanced documentation, there's a docs folder for how you can use TypeScript or how you can, if you want to contribute to Clasp, uh, how you can develop Clasp, add your own feature, um, et cetera. Um, Alexander again is asking um, examples of how you can push code to two more projects. Cool. Yeah, so for pushing for multiple projects, um, right now there's no uh, native class support. Right now in your class.json, you have uh, the script ID, and so you could manually change that. Right. Some people um, also just move the files from like class.json or class1.json and class2.json, and then they move it do a MV class one dot JSON to class dot JSON. Um, I think there's a GitHub issue asking for multiple scripts support, and that's something mm. I think is very reasonable, very practical. Um, and I think it's just a matter of how we implement it. Sure. Um, but yeah, uh, we should follow up on the GitHub issue and. I'm sure I could add that to class so you can have more native support. Well, Grant, uh, that's, um, I hope we've um, tantalized and educated our audience. Um, and hopefully, you're going to get a deluge of um, class feature requests and sure. um, hopefully, contributions awesome. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, thank Thanks for having me on, on here. Absolute pleasure. And um, I'm sure, actually, I feel given the the rate that um, Clasp is developing right now, I think um, it won't be too long before we're having to have you back on to uh, talk hmm. about some of the latest features. Yeah, but, sure. Anytime. 
So thank you, Grant, for your time. I'm conscious that um, I've got some editing to do for this show. So uh, thanks for everyone who's contributed today and um, look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you.